Hello everyone, in this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about tunnel assay for the detection of apoptosis. I'm going to talk in detail about what is the principle and what is the procedure of this assay for the detection of apoptosis. Okay, so tunnel assay, as you know that the apoptosis is recognized by the DNA fragmentation. DNA fragmentation in apoptotic cells is followed by the cell death and the removal from the tissue uh, usually within several hours. So the main feature or the hallmark of apoptotic cell is the fragmented DNA. And this fragmented DNA could be, uh, this bro bro DNA breaks could be either a double-stranded break or there could only be the single stranded break okay double stranded break like this or simply single stranded break so both of these kinds of fragmented dna they have free 3 prime hydroxyl group whereas normal or proliferative nuclei which have relatively insignificant numbers of dna 3 prime hydroxyl ends and they usually do not stain with the kit so basically what is the difference between apoptotic cells and the non-apoptotic cells at the DNA level is that the apoptotic cells will have either double-stranded DNA break or single-stranded DNA break and these fragmented DNA in from the apoptotic cells they will have free 3' prime hydroxyl group whereas normal or proliferative nuclei they have relatively insignificant number of 3' prime hydroxyl ends okay so this is the first thing to understand so the next thing is the tunnel assay or simply terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase uh, DUTP NIC end leveling assay what it does it examines apoptosis via DNA fragmentation so this is the basis of uh, commercially available kits okay so tunnel assay examines apoptosis via DNA fragmentation. So what happens is that the fragmented DNA are leveled enzymatically at the 3' prime termini with the modified nucleotide or simply leveled nucleotide. And then this, these commercially available kit such as apotac kits, they detect single-stranded and double-stranded breaks associated with the apoptosis. Okay, the summary of this slide is that the apoptosis process results in the fragmentation of the DNA and this fragmented DNA can have single-stranded or double-stranded break. So, and they have free 3' prime hydroxyl groups. And this free 3' prime hydroxyl groups uh, could be enzymatically labeled by the modified nucleotide which is the basis of tunnel assay. So now, moving further, commercially available kits such as Apotag in situ apoptosis detection kit, they distinguish apoptosis from necrosis by specifically det detecting DNA cleavage and chromatin condensation associated with apoptosis. However, there may be some instances where cells exhibiting necrotic morphology may stain lightly or in rare instances, DNA fragmentation can be absent or incomplete in induced apoptosis. Okay, this for you to uh, understand. So that there may be the chances that uh, the apoptotic cells, in the apoptotic cells, there might be the absence of DNA fragmentations, but this is in very rare cases or uh, some incom incomplete uh, DNA fragmentation in, uh, and due to induced apoptosis. Okay, this is but this is the rare thing. This does not happen generally. Okay, so just for you to know. And then moving further, so then what is the principle of this process? The reagents uh, provided in the apotag peroxidase kits or the kits for the tunnel assay, they are lit designed to label 3' prime hydroxyl end of the DNA termini 
in situ with the chemically labeled and unlabeled nucleotide. Okay, so let's say that we have here apoptotic cells and this apoptotic cells either has a um, single stranded break or it has double stranded break, right? So then in this single stranded or double stranded break, we have free hydroxyl group and here also we have free hydroxyl group. So then the kits that are the, that are available commercially for the detection of apoptosis what they contain they contain both chemically labeled and unlabeled nucleotides that means nucleotide for the nucleotides i'm just going to write ntp so in some cases these nucleotides for example are labeled with digoxyzenine digoxyzenine okay this is an example of a label okay or they could be without any labeling so basically what they do then these digoxyzenine labeled or unlabeled nucleotides what they do they bind to this free hydroxyl group they bind to this free hydroxyl group then what happens then how this binding occurs so this binding is actually facilitated by the um enzymatically okay by by the enzyme that is called terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase okay terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase this enzyme is also called tdt so what is the uh, so this enzyme is present in the kits uh, available commercially so then this enzyme actually labels these nucleotides to the a uh, three prime hydroxyl a three prime hydroxyl group three prime hydroxyl group present in these uh, uh, fragmented dna right so so then yes these the nucleotides containing the reaction buffer are enzymatically added to the dna by terminal deoxy uh, nucleotidal transferase tdt enzyme so then the the, the 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 important thing to understand here is that this tdt catalyzes a template independent addition of nucleotide trisphosphates to the three prime ends of double stranded or single stranded dna it adds these nucleotides in a template independent fashion okay so then what we will have here then so now we have our in, in this double stranded in this fragmented dna double stranded or single stranded so we have now ntp this ntp is now labeled uh, that is a nu nucleotides and this contains a uh, digoxyzenine label right there is a digoxyzenine label then what happens further uh, further what happens is that this incorporated nucleotides they form an oligomer composed of digoxyzenine, uh, digoxyzenine conjugate nucleotide and unlabeled nucleotide in a random sequence so basically here so you have to pay attention here that the addition because both digoxyzenine labeled and unlabeled okay here this ntp with digoxy digoxyzenine and this is without digoxyzenine both of these uh, nucleotides they get they they get bind to the they get bound to the this free three prime hydroxyl end of the fragmented dna right so then now we have digoxyzenine labeled and unlabeled nucleotides bound to the bound to the these fragmented dna in a random fashion so the ratio of label to unlabeled nucleotide in apotac peroxidase kit is optimized to promote anti digoxyzenine antibody binding so now we have here digoxyzenine right so we have here digoxyzenine label so then uh, so what we will do further then dna fragments which have been labeled with digoxyzenine nucleotides are then allowed to bind to an anti digoxyzenine antibody so then i will just go back here we have digoxyzenine here we have digoxyzenine so in this digoxyzenine then anti digoxyzenine antibody anti digoxyzenine antibody okay anti digoxyzenine antibody it can bind to the digoxyzenine so yeah he, okay so so what happened here guys let me explain again so we had double stranded break free hydroxyl group in that both digoxyzenine labeled and unlabeled nucleotide both of them bound so now in this uh, in this fragmented dna there is digoxy uh, the, the binding of digoxyzenine label as well as unlabeled nucleotide so then we will use antibody 
and this antibody is anti-digoxazenin antibody therefore it will bind to the digoxazenin okay so now then further uh, so uh, so like i said like i said just now so that dna fragments which have been labeled with digoxazenin nucleotides are then allowed to bind an anti-digoxazenin antibody that is conjugated to a peroxidase perox, peroxidase reporter molecule okay anti-digoxazenin antibody this is actually conjugated to peroxidase reporter molecule okay so this anti important thing to understand is that this anti-digoxazenin anti digoxazenin antibody is conjugated to peroxidase reporter molecule so then this peroxidase reporter mol um, peroxidase antibody conjugates enzymatically and generates a permanent in intense localized stain from chromogenic substrate so then okay so the this is the uh, ntp and bound to the, the fragmented dna we have here digoxazenin and then in this, uh, because this is leveled with digoxazenin, therefore anti-digoxazenin antibody, okay? Therefore this antibody, this antibody binds and after binding, what happens after binding uh, this antibody? This antibody has peroxidase reporter. This antibody has peroxidase reporter. So then what happens? What happens is that we, when we put the substrate such as AEC substrate, that is the substrate for the peroxidase enzyme then there is development of some color okay so then we will observe you know if this is an example that this is the final result that we observe after we put this chromogenic substrate and visualize it under microscope you can see that these nuclei this one here this one here uh, these are all apoptotic epop these are all uh, indicating that these are all apoptotic cells okay so this is uh, this is a very important test i hope this video was helpful thank you very much for your kind attention